What is going on, GFCW family? And welcome to another weekly wellness workshop. As always, I'm Dr. Ryan Hyde, and myself and my wife, Dr. Haley, and our practice are on a mission to empower you to thrive through teaching and helping you understand what it means and takes to truly be happy and healthy. Furthermore, we want to provoke you to take action regarding your health now instead of waiting for dysfunction and disease to arise, like we have often been taught to do. Now, tonight I am so excited to be with you guys. Um, we are going to be going over a topic that is definitely more philosophical in nature, um, but it really helps to bring together kind of what chiropractic is um, and the reason that we have it, right? Uh, now, before we jump into that, I do want to give a couple shout outs. Um, I have been working with a few other um, resources, we can call them. One of them is a Marine Corps brother of mine named Joseph Ferry. Um, him and I are actually currently working on a class to talk about adversity, facing your fears, dealing with all that type of stuff, and still being able to continue and fight on. So, um, him and I are working on that, so stay tuned for that. That will be coming here within the next couple of months. And also, I have been working with um, Higher Health and their owner, Nigel, um, working on a collaboration to bring to you guys a good class about the reasons organ meat is so important to our health, our gut biome, our mental health. Um, Nigel is a great, great guy. We had a amazing talk this morning over some coffee. He's just so knowledgeable that I was just excited to get the opportunity to bring him on here with us and let him teach all of us firsthand the importance of diet and nutrition and supplements and stuff like that. So keep those in the back of the mind because they are definitely going to be coming your way pretty soon. Uh, but tonight, tonight's all about the safety pin cycle. All right. Um, now I know that means absolutely nothing to you viewers right now. That is okay. That's why we're here tonight. We're here to learn. Now, before I go into depth, what the safety pin cycle is, we first have to go over a few very key and specific definitions. All right. Now, of course, like always, when I need, bam, I got my trusty, Trusty chiropractic textbook. I have told you guys from the jump, this is one of the biggest books that I pull information from. It is a chiropractor's lifeline. Um, great book. Again, W.R. Stevenson. Um, so tonight, I am going to be reading the definitions from this book. Again, these are chiropractic definitions. You guys are going to see how that kind of differentiates between normal definition and the medical definition. Um, however... These definitions are not the easiest to understand. So we're going to kind of read through these and then I'm going to kind of explain it together with us. Um, so let's jump right into it, guys. One of the first things I want to go over, you, over with you is something that we hold near and dear as chiropractors, and that's called universal and innate intelligences, okay? Universal and innate intelligences. Now, universal intelligence as defined by Stevenson, the infinite intelligence that is the source of everything in the universe. The infinite intelligence pervading all space and matter, which creates and governs all things, key point, both material and immaterial, okay? So a universal intelligence occupies all space and distance. It has existed always. It is older, wiser, greater, stronger, and better than anything in the universe. It created everything and must have been first and indefinitely superior in order to do so. It must have been and is very intelligent. So the way I like to explain universal intelligence is a universal intelligence, that's how um, tables are able to stay together, right? The atoms and the tree is dead itself, but there's some kind of intelligence that's telling that structure to stay together, right? That's universal intelligence. Um, 
you know, keeping things a non-organic item, keeping it in space and matter is that universal intelligence. So we see that, you know, every single day I got, you know, I got my phone on top of books. Those books aren't alive, right? But there's some type of intelligence that has to keep and let those molecules and atoms know, even though we bounce and bounce off one another, we have to stay in these general forms. Okay. So that's universal intelligence. The big guy, the big head honcho, the creator, God, all that kind of whatever your, your, your genre could be right there, right? The big head honcho, universal intelligence. The next one is innate intelligence. And Stevenson describes innate intelligence as the localized or inborn intelligence of a living thing. So innate intelligence is a finite portion of universal intelligence in a finite portion of matter. Now innate intelligence mission is to keep the matter an active organization. Now the way I describe uni or excuse me, innate intelligence is the best way to do it. You cut your finger, right? Get a little cut on your finger. You're not thinking, oh, I have to, I have to create new cells and I have to heal this one and mend the blood vessels and mend the skin. No, you are not consciously thinking that, right? Your body just knows to do so. Your body knows when something isn't right. We send pain to this area. Hey, that's the fire alarm. Something's going on. Um, you know, when we're dealing with whatever it may be, it's that innate intelligence in organic material, okay? So trees, they are a living thing. They have an innate intelligence. There is some type of intelligence that is telling them they need to go through photosynthesis, right? That's just not something that, I don't know how to do that, right? It's just natural. It's that, it's a finite portion of that all-knowing and universal intelligence. We take a little piece of that and you plop it into the living matter, right? So that innate intelligence is what gives living things its ability to heal a cut, do photosynthesis, you know, have the instincts to do whatever it may be. That's that innate intelligence. It's only in living things, right? You know, the table, the books, the book isn't alive. The book doesn't need to do photosynthesis. The book doesn't need to heal a cut. You rip a page in a book, that's it. Nothing happens, right? The universal intelligence is what is keeping it all together, okay? So universal intelligence, big head honcho, all-knowing, all-seeing, never wrong. Innate intelligent, living things only, and it's what gives us that I can heal a cut. Plants know how to do photosynthesis. That's the innate uh, intelligence. Now we dive into a word that you have probably heard Dr. Haley and I say numerous times, and that's a subluxation, okay? Now subluxation for chiropractics, that's our, whoo, that's our big $20 word right there, right? So what, what does subluxation mean? What is it, right? Bear with me. We're gonna go through this definition. It's gonna, it's gonna sound like a lot, but I promise you, we'll break it down step by step. So the definition of chiropractic, or excuse me, the definition of subluxation, again, according to Stevenson, a subluxation is the condition of a vertebra that has lost its proper juxtaposition with the one above or the one below or both to an extent less than a luxation, which impinges nerves and interferes with the transmission of mental impulses. Yeah, I remember my first time reading that and being like, what, <laughs> what does that even mean, right? So let's break it down a little bit, okay? A subluxation is the condition of a vertebra. Vertebra, it's your backbones, peeps, right? All those backbones right there, fancy term for it, vertebra. So a subluxation is a condition of the backbones that has lost its proper juxtaposition, okay? Now, juxtaposition, 
just the positioning of that joint, okay? So, a subluxation is a condition of a backbone that has lost its proper positioning with the one above or the one below, which impinges nerves. So, because one is not in the proper position, it's impinging nerves and it interferes with the transmission of these mental impulses. And we're going to get to that in a little bit when we get a little bit more specific with the cycle. Okay? So, a subluxation is when a backbone is not in the proper position with the one above it or below it to a point that it causes impingement of a nerve and does not allow the proper transmission of these forces through your body. And when we get to the forces and mental stuff, you, you'll kind of understand what I'm getting at when I have, I got a little picture for you guys. Subluxation, it's a misalignment in the spine, right? And that's what we correct. So universal intelligence, innate intelligence, subluxation. We only got a couple more here, I promise. Now, something else that we're gonna wanna go over is ease versus dis hyphen ease. Not disease, dis hyphen ease. And I'm gonna explain the difference there, okay? So, disease, disease is a term used by physicians for a sickness, okay? You got a cancer, you got a disease. You have bronchitis, you got a disease. To them, disease is an entity that one can have and is worthy of a name, hence a diagnosis, okay? So the medical term for disease is when you're sick and it comes with a name. So you have bronchitis, you have pneumonia, you have cancer, whatever it may be, there's a name and diagnosis that can go with that. Chiropractors, on the other hand, or at least philosophically sound ones, we say dis hyphen ease, okay? And there's a big difference there. Dis hyphen ease is a term used by chiropractic, meaning not having ease. It is the condition of matter when it does not have ease. In chiropractic, that entity or the ease is that entity. So the ease is you and me. Are our bodies at ease? Are we in a full safety pin cycle? It's going to make sense in a, prom in a second, I promise. Um, that is in various modes of an expression, the body lacks ease, okay? Now, this hyphen ease is when the body is not at ease. There is something in that system, most likely caused by a subluxation, that is causing the body to not be in a proper cycle, okay? Um, here's the cycle that we're talking about today, okay? So this is the safety pin cycle right here. This is your normal, you're in alignment, you're functioning well, you're at ease, okay? Can you guys see that? This one over here is what we call dis hyphen ease. And you can already see something's not right there, right? So we're gonna get to this in a second. Actually, our next couple terms that we're gonna go over are efferent versus afferent, okay? Now, these are big, scary sounding words for basically Impulses that come from the body, or excuse me, from the brain out to the body, and then from the body back into the brain. Efferent is this one right here. Sorry. Efferent, this is efferent. The mental impulses coming from that innate intelligence that we talked about, because it's, it, it's all knowing too, it sends the messages down all the way to your body, right? And that's efferent. Brain to body. Afferent, on the other hand, is taking all the signals and messages from your body, sending it back up to your brain, where your brain then processes everything, okay? So efferent, brain to body. Afferent, body to brain, okay? Now, the last couple definitions I wanna hit you guys with 
are quality versus quantity, okay? Now, the difference in this one, and this takes a little bit to get the understanding of. If you remember earlier, we said universal intelligence is all knowing, which means it is far, far more intelligent than we can ever be, okay? Universal intelligence, all knowing. It is never wrong. It knows exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, to be perfect at all times. Now, what did we say innate intelligence was? Oh, that's right. It's a finite portion of universal intelligence. Well, if universal intelligence is always right and never wrong, and we're taking a little piece of that, plucking it in here, calling it innate intelligence, well, then... By process of elimination, innate intelligence has to be 100% at all times as well, too, right? And this is where it gets a little confusing. The quality, the quality of innate intelligence is always, always 100%. Okay? And universal to innate, 100% quality. It's the perfect signaling, perfect connection, never breaks, never falters. It is 100% perfect at all times. Where we run into the issue, so it's like, well, Dr. Ryan, how come we don't feel healthy and are perfect at all times if we have this little bit of the finite universal intelligence within us? And this is where the safety pin cycle comes into play, people. Because of matter... Our bodies, whether it may be a trauma, a thought, a toxin, those are what cause us to not get the full 100% quality, okay? We are limited by the quantity of matter, okay? So the reason we're not able to express 100% quality of innate intelligence is due to the fact that I, myself, Dr. Ryan Hyde, my matter is not perfect. Maybe I have an autoimmune issue. Maybe I have diabetes where I'm not getting the full proper connection, right? And now I'm not able to express my matter in perfect 100%. So to clarify real quick, quality is always 100%. Innate is always 100%, right? Boom, always 100, always 100, always 100. It runs into the issue with quantity of our matter. Our matter is not able to receive that 100% intelligence. We have flaws, we have issues. And that's why the chiropractic adjustment is so vitally important, right? So when we go back to this page right here, we see that if we're getting adjusted, we're eating healthy, we're physical, we take care of our mental, we got a good loop. Brain, body, they're able to connect. We're getting the most, the best possible innate intelligence that we can get, right? This is where it breaks. This is where we get that dis hyphen ease, right? Something happens. Excuse me, we get a subluxation. We're not in good alignment anymore, right? There's not a good brain to body connection. So what does that mean? What do we need to do? Again, you gotta address the subluxation. Get this back into good alignment. Now, some of the things that take us out of this good safety pin cycle, right? Thoughts, traumas, toxins. Three T's of chiropractic, baby. Thoughts. How do you talk to yourself? Are you tend to be a pretty genuinely positive person? Or are you constantly negative? Do you surround yourself with negative people? Right? You know, a big thing too is you see people that are so amazing to other people. Always complimenting them, showing them love, going above and beyond for them. But man, you should hear the way they talk about themselves. I'm not good enough for this. I suck at this. That person doesn't like me. I already know because I do this. 
people, that is not a good way to go about life, right? It's one of those things. It's like, geez, would you talk that way about somebody else? Why, why are you doing it about yourself then? So thoughts is that one of the big first ones. What goes on in here is what gets manifested out there. You know, what goes on in here, what you are feeling, what your energy is, that's what you attract, okay? It is what it is. That is just, it's, it's, it is what it is. If you're a negative, mopey, whiny, complaining person, I'm willing to bet a lot of people the around you and the things that happen to you are probably a lot more negative. Whereas if you're surrounding yourself with happy, healthy individuals, with love, with compassion, with kindness, with good energy, good vibes, the chances that that is being brought back to you are so much higher. So that's thoughts. We gotta be having good self-talk, people. Stop talking down on yourself. Talk to you as you would talk to a, a dearest loved one, right? You're not gonna tell them to their face, you suck, you suck at this. No, you, don't, you wanna do that to them. Don't do it to yourself, okay? So thoughts. Traumas, kind of pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, car accidents, fell over, you reach out, you break a bone. But there's also those traumas that people aren't thinking of. Are you someone that sits at a desk for eight hours a day and doesn't move? Hate to be the bearer of bad news, that's a trauma. Are you someone that has to travel four hours every single day? Again, hate to break it to you, that's a trauma. Anything that's causing your posture, your structure, to be put into areas that it should not be, whether you want to call them a micro trauma, a, a, a hiccup, a twinge, whatever it may be, they need to be addressed, okay? So thoughts, traumas, two things that are going to knock you out of the good loop right here. Those are what is going to knock you out of this. We want everybody in this. You're happy, you're healthy, you're well-adjusted, you're eating good. That's where you are, okay? And then the final thing, the final T is toxins, right? And this isn't just chemical toxins, right? Like, oh, did I inhale too many paint fumes? Did I, um, you know, was I around bleach too long? While yes, those are toxins, people, this day and age, the food that we are eating, not good, not good at all. And I hate to be the one to tell you this, but the amount of food that is being pushed into our food sources right now, man, I feel like every day they find some kind of new research where it's like, oh, well, we didn't know that this additive caused cancer or that it was a carcinogen. That's what it is. A lot of times, you know, even these, these processed foods, we go to McDonald's or, you know, we do whatever it is. A lot of the stuff is so toxic to us that over time, it's breaking down our cell walls. It's making our cells mutate, right? Giving us chance, a higher risk for cancers. That's not a good thing. So with these three things, thoughts, traumas, and toxins, those are what are knocking us out of our safety pin cycle, right? Okay, well, geez, Dr. Ryan, you told me all the things that knock me out and give us subluxations. How do I, what do I, what am I supposed to do to stay in the good cycle? Glad you asked. So as a chiropractor, I'd be remiss if I didn't say the number one and most effective answer, get adjusted. I know, shocking, right? People, getting adjusted is what clicks you back in to the cycle. This is a subluxation, right? Pretend this is your back. If a bone, like we said, a subluxation, a backbone has moved compared to the one above and below. And now it's impinging stuff, right? Well, my job as a chiropractor is to find those subluxations and correct them. When I correct the subluxation, you are now, you're back to a good, good cycle. And that's where my job stops. Because your innate intelligence is so smart that it now takes over the healing. All I do is put in that thrust. I get that bone back to where it needs to be so innate intelligence, that baby can run pristine, perfect messaging from the brain to the body, back from the body to the brain. And that's what it's all about, that connection from brain to body. 
So obviously the number one thing that's gonna help that is getting the chiropractic adjustment. And that's why you always hear Dr. Haley and I talk about frequency and consistency. It is so important because in the beginning, you're more likely to get knocked out of that cycle and you need more adjustments to get your body used to, oh man, hey, this circle where I'm all connected, that's the one that feels good. That's the one I like to be in. I got good brain to body connection, right? Your body gets used to that and wants to stay there now, which is why you see the frequency after, after you've been consistent and been very frequent. We notice, well, we don't need to do it three times a week. We don't need to do it two times a week anymore. Now we can do that maintenance once a week, baby, and your body's loving it. That's the goal. So chiropractic adjustments. Then these next three are in no specific order, okay? You always hear Dr. Haley and I talk about diet and nutrition. You always hear us talk about be physical. Whatever age and stage you are at, there is some type of movement you can do to stay physical, okay? And then the third one is mental health. I don't know if that was me with the balloons. I don't know. Facebook's got some cool stuff now. Um, diet and nutrition. Obvious reasons. That's going to address the toxins. Oh, no. Would you look at this, right? Diet and nutrition. I'm not going to get on my soapbox here. You guys know how much Dr. Haley and I promote diet and nutrition. It is huge. It is a big quintessential factor for living a happy, healthy life. Number two, you got to be physical, people. I'll say it to the day I die. Movement is the key to life. You stop moving, your health is going to decline. I guarantee it. I'll, put, I'll bet anything on it. <sighs> Got to stay physical. And like I said, whatever age and stage you're, you're at, you can do something physical, right? I have, I have the one person that comes to mind is one of our favorite patients. She's an amazing, amazing woman. Um, she's up there in, kind of up there in years. Um, but she constantly is asking me, well, Dr. Ryan, do you think I should do this Tai Chi class? Or, you know, Dr. Ryan, I've been thinking about starting a, a stationary bike. I just want to keep moving a little bit more. This is from someone who, who's older than me. And they, want, they understand the importance of being physical. Now, am I going to tell her to go run a marathon? Absolutely not. Am I going to tell her to go weightlift? Absolutely not. I'm going to give her, let's try walking. Tai Chi. Beautiful, controlled, slow movements, right? And then a stationary bike. I mean, this lady is, is amazing. She's doing all this stuff, right? She understands the importance of it. And her care has gone, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Going from barely being able to walk to now Tai Chi and, <laughs> and riding a stationary bike. And again, elderly. So what does that say about us? We need to step up and start doing more for ourselves. And then finally is mental health. We just talked about it with the thoughts, with the thoughts, right? You got to have good self-talk. It is okay. And I'll be the first to admit, you're not going to have a good day every single time. It's okay. It's okay to have a bad day. It is. And I think I talked about it during my consistency speech. But how do you come back the next day? Do you stay mopey the rest of the week? Are you talking to yourself like you would talk to a loved one? Or are you talking to yourself like someone you despise? That all plays in effect. Mental health. Do you have a morning routine? For those of you that were there, I gave a, a, a class on morning routines. Do you have one of those? Are you doing things that bring you joy in life? Are you going and spending an hour, two hours a day with your significant other? Are you able to spend time with your grandkid? Are you able to go kayaking or hiking or hunting because that's what you love doing? That's all mental health, people. That needs to be taken into consideration. I'm the first one to admit, I love chiropractic. If this is something I will do to the day I die, I love adjusting people. It's just, I truly believe it's what I was put on this earth to do. But I don't wanna do it my entire life. <laughs> we have to be able to do other things that make us happy. I love chiropractic. I also love kayaking with my wife during the summer. That's for, I do that because of my mental health. I need to, I need to adjust the soul every now and then. You, you hear me? Like, mm, I got to do things that make me want to get up and live. And that's your mental health right there. 
So before I let you guys go, health is not a straight line, okay? You don't just continually get better and better and better and better and better and better. I'm gonna tell you right now, this next part is gonna be very blunt. I'm gonna get very real with you guys. Health is not linear, right? This is not realistic. This is, right? So you come, this is how I'll explain it. You come into my office, right? You start getting better, start getting better, start getting better. Oh no, you went skiing over the weekend and took a hard fall. You got that hip pain back again, right? Okay, no big deal, no big deal. But look what happened right after. You got better. Uh, maybe you got into a fender bender. You fell down a little bit. But look what happened. You start getting better again. This one right here never drops below this one right here. This one right here never gets as low as when you started. And that's what I love telling people. It's not linear. It's a roller coaster ride. And I understand it. I wish, I wish it wasn't that way. I wish I could just do something that kept you flying sore and high. It's not realistic. It is what it is. I'm going to break it down to you. You get better. Life happens. Things happen. You fall down a little bit. But again, if you are consistent and frequent, I promise you, you never get this low again though. Right? And that's why it is so hard for some people to get behind their health and really start making a change. They want easy shortcuts. Oh, I don't, yeah, I'll just take this pill, right? This fat loss pill and it will get me to lose weight. Nope, probably not. You're probably gonna have some side effects to deal with that now. I can tell you how to lose weight, work out, eat healthy, run. Problem is, those aren't easy things to do and you have to stay consistent with them. And I hate to say it people, blunt coming, there are no shortcuts with health. Every day in my office, when people come in for recommendations, I give recommendations based on what is gonna get them healthy the quickest way possible. I'm not trying to, to make it so it takes you 10 years to get better again. I don't want that for you. You always hear us say, we want nothing from you, but everything for you guys. You wanna be healthy and happy? You gotta work at it. This is how you get better. And again, I'm the first person to, to advocate small steps. Don't try and change all this stuff at once. Don't add in a morning routine with four things in it and then, you know, change up your diet completely and then add in working out and add in, you know, mental exercises. You're going to overload yourself. Then you'll be discouraged. Nah, I just don't, I'm not going to do anything now. Pick one or two things. Pick one or two things and work on those. Once you get those down, you have them down. You're not worried about them anymore. They are a habit. Now you just add on one more. And you add on one more. This does not happen overnight. This is something that takes time, repetition, consistency, frequency, okay? But again, Dr. Haley and I are here to help you. We want to be with you guys on this journey. And again, know that we are going to be giving recommendations that get you to your goal as quickly as possible. We're not trying to keep you lingering around. We want you, I want you feeling as happy and healthy as quick as possible. Unfortunately, it takes time, it takes dedication, and it takes work. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That is the answer right there. There is no magic pill that you can take. I am healthy. There is no magic pill you can pop, I will never get a disease again. There is no magic pill you can pop in your Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have to work at it. I can only do so much when I see people in the office. Dr. Haley can only do so much when we see you in the office. It is on you. It is on you to go out and live the rest of your life like you have just left our office.
where you're trying to keep that adjustment, hold it as long as possible. But it is on you to make those changes. And again, hey, I'm here to help you. I want to. I want to see you succeed. We want to see those things for you. But you got to want it for yourself first. So guys, before I leave you here tonight, of course, like always, we have to have a call to action, right? What's going to get you guys engaged in a little bit, right? So we went over those three things, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. What I challenge all of you to do is in each category, write down three things that are giving you subluxations, right? So for example, thoughts, okay? What are three things that I'm thinking that might give me a subluxation? Okay. So for example, ah, I didn't do so great today in the office, you know, and I just ah, I really, ah, I just didn't do well with that patient or ah, I wanted that new patient exam to go a lot better. The more I dwell on that, the more I'm going to have a brain to body disconnection. Okay. So maybe you write down for traumas. Um, I sit behind a desk for six hours a day and don't move. What did we say? That's a form of trauma. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is go through thoughts, traumas, toxins. And for each one of those, write out three things that are contributing to your subluxations. Okay. Now, once you get that list, I want you to pick two, just two things from those lists. It could be one from thoughts, one from toxins, one from trauma, one from toxins. Just two things in general from that big list that you now have. And that's where I want you to start your change. Those two things, whatever you think is going to get you to that happier, healthier life. Start with those two changes. Get them down. And people, it's not do it for a week and then, oh, I'm good. I can add something in. No. Three weeks to 90 days. I know it's a big chunk of time. That's when a habit is, is formed. So a minimum of three weeks, you got to do these one or two things, these one or two changes that you're going to make in your life. Again, if you're one of those people that sits down all the time, maybe one of the changes you're going to make is every hour, I'm just going to get up and move around for two minutes, two minutes. That's it. Whether it just stands up in front of your desk, do some stretches, whatever it may be. What are you going to challenge yourself with? What are you going <coughs> to, excuse me, what are you going to pick today? What are the two things? They're going to help change your life tomorrow. Okay. So again, I challenge you guys to do, go through that tonight. See where you're getting some subluxations and then where you can make the change. All right. So I'm going to leave you guys with that tonight. I had a blast going over this uh, talk with you guys tonight. Safety pin cycle is something that's near and dear to my heart. I love the philosophy behind it. It also gives you a good insight into how mine and Dr. Haley's brains kind of work. Right. Um, so Thank you all for joining tonight. We really, really appreciate you guys. Um, and Dr. Haley will be going over healthy family, happy life next week. So you guys won't want to miss that. She's going to be giving a great, great class. So I will see you all next time and y'all have a good night.